greetings out there on YouTube, man. It's gonna find it out. You know, sadly these days, I see many things that remind me of the Bible. Do you remember any of those who read your Bible? The young prophet and the old prophet. God told the young prophet to do something, right? And it passed him through. And the old prophet wanted that people think that he was relative to the things that were going on. You know, he was still up there. He was Mr. High and Mighty. Right? And whatever else he thought, you know. I'll leave that up for you to figure out, right? And so he, he sent a, a lie to this guy to get him to come back the way God told him not to go. He bowed down to what he thought was an authority figure. You know, he'd been told by an angel of God not to do this, you know? And yet he bowed down to a man. He's always, you know, he, he, he's been doing it longer than me. He must know what he's talking about, you know? But when God tells you not to do something and you do it, there's going to be a price, right? And there was for him, right? It's truly something. And you look at that right now. People are raising up men. Right? And they're bowing down to him. If anybody says anything contrary to these men, if they catch something that's off uh, scripture, because you, some of you love the doctrines of men these days instead of the word of God, and that's so sad. They twisted his religion, and they, they threw in their own dog. Was like, oh, you got to do this, and you got to do that. You know, it's like none of it, none of it matters to God, those doctrines of men, because they are the doctrines of men and not of God. Sadly, most haven't figured that out yet. That explains all the lukewarm he's talking about in the Bible. This is view from his mouth. That they're going to end up riding the slide on the left-hand side of God down to hell, right? And for those of you who don't know what the left-hand side is, read your Matthew 25 again. It speaks of the foolish virgins. It speaks of the bags of gold. You get on down to the bottom. It talks to you about the sheep going to the left and right hand side. See, the goats go to the left and the sheep go to the right. The goats ride the slide, and the sheep stay with Jesus, right? So, you know, whether are you a flower or a weed in God's garden? Are you a goat or a sheep? Do you even know? Is your daily life something that Jesus could look upon and be happy with? Or does he cry when he looks at what you're doing? These are questions most people never ask themselves. Some think, oh, I'm a Jesus, I'm this and that. They say a few verses, but they don't have Jesus in their heart. They gossip, they backstab, they do all manner of wickedness. There are some that are even twerking in churches, brothers and sisters. No joke, for real. I tell you, they're lucky I'm not God. I know right where I send that lightning bolt. I think some of you can guess, right? Let's see them twerk after that, right? They'll have problems sitting down for a while, right? He is merciful. And hopefully those twerkers, I guess it's the right word for it, I don't know what the correct word is for it is, will stop shaking their ass, right? And get right with God before it's too late. But some, they just lift service. That's it, brothers and sisters, lift service. And God is a cardio knower. He knows what's in your heart, right? He really does. You invite him into your heart, and then everybody forgets about him and does everything from the head. Prayers, prays from the head, all dry books, or yeah, 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 and they have nothing. They don't know God. They go to buildings, you know, but is God there? No, God's everywhere. God, yes, can God be there, but. There are a lot of churches that aren't. Everybody forgets the seven churches. All seven thought they were hot, clearly, right? But five were not. Only one third, basically, were. You know? Think about it. Hot, cold, and lukewarm. Lukewarm gets spewed out of your mouth, out of your mouth, right? Where do you fit into that equation? Have you done the math of where you fit into God's plan? On whose side you really are on. If you're not living for God, who are you living for? Right? Because if you're not living for God, you're living for the devil. Right? If you're living for yourself, you're living for the devil. All he wants to do is hurt God. Because he knows he was sentenced to death. He knows he's going to burn in the lake of fire. And that's where Satan screams. So yes, there is a place worse than hell. Because you don't hear him screaming when he's in hell. You hear him screaming when he's in the lake of fire. And many are going to join him. Do you want to join him? I sure don't. Right? God showed me three levels, three, well, three dimensions of hell. That's the correct phrase, right? And I tell you, I saw demons as far as the eye could see. And they are nasty. And when you fight with them like I did, trust me, you don't want to ever spend time down there without God 
watching your back, right? Now, maybe I'll tell that story one day. But I thought that I was there for another reason other than I was, right? I think I did God proud, though, right? Until he pulled me out of there, right? Now, the experience taught me something, right? But I didn't, but I, you know, I was young in the Lord, okay? And I didn't fully understand it, but I thought I did. It was only upon reflection later on that I saw there's more than just one thing that was being done there, right? And, and then I saw it actually happen in real life, right? So he gave me an early warning of certain events, but I didn't fully understand the message. I got part of the message and thought that was what it was all about, right? And then I figured part of it, and then I looked upon it, and then there was another part to it that actually played out in the leaf. And I go, wow, right? Because there was more to it than I originally thought because I hadn't contemplated on, on it enough. Some get dreams and visions, you know. The thing is, this is the time of dreams and visions. I know a guy that, you know, recently uh, I had run into, okay? God sent me to find this man, right? And God gave me information to interpret dreams and all that. Because uh, I, I, I needed it at the time, you know. And God pulled it. I don't know if he's ever going to do it again. I don't know. Matter of not to me, what God does is, because I'm going to go along with whatever he does, because he's right. He's smarter than me. I love him. You know, I can't even imagine where to begin, how to say the vastness of God's wisdom, right? I don't think no man can. Even if he gave you a million down, years down here to think about it, I don't think you can come up with a number big enough for how smart God is. We can number men quite easily. And we don't use all our brain. And God knows everything. The hairs on your head, the whole nine yards, knows your name before you're even born. Right? Yet men always try to think they know better than God, know more than God. Nuclear waste, bad idea. You know, in 1952, Einstein gave them the plans they can make these plants. You get like at least a long time ago, you get over way over five of them for less than the cost of one modern nuclear plant. Thing is, these ones run on the waste. They can turn uh, one ton of waste, yep, two thousand pounds of waste, into about a twenty or thirty pound ball the size of a grapefruit in your hand. It's only radioactive for two or three hundred years instead of the thousands of years and stuff we got now. Safer, cleaner. They use the waste. And you wouldn't be making more. They don't know where to store the stuff. It's leaking everywhere. Look at Japan. Wormwood in the waters. All the oceans are connected, by the way. So next time you eat some ocean fish, I uh, hope you enjoy your pee glowing in the dark if you keep eating it. If you make it that long and your hair don't fall out. They're polluting the air. They're polluting the land. They're polluting the water. You can't even find safe drinking water. And they know better than God to put this in a garden. Oh, yes, they know it all. They lie to you every day. But you hire liars who God won't even let in this holy city. Take a good look at Revelation 22, 15. Those are the people he's talking about in Zechariah 14, right? Oh, yeah. Look below. Verse 16 on down, right? See, right now you have faith to go on, right? A lot of people don't know Jesus is real and out there guessing, family, you know? A lot of people guess what God wants instead of asking him, sadly. I know God is real. Now, they are all going to know God is real. Especially after he wakes up that 200 million man army, right? They send, uh, go against them, right? Come on, right? And their jaws are dropped, and every knee will bend, knowing that he's Lord. Yes, but that doesn't mean everybody's going to follow him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have had to put the four else's there. And again, there's proof of what I've been saying. That the number one feast that is important to God is the Feast of Tabernacles. And all, a whole bunch of them tried to tell me I was wrong. But you look right there. In Zechariah 14, he tells you, they must go to Jerusalem. They didn't say Israel. Because I don't think there's an Israel left. after a two million man army go there to surround it. This is a really tiny piece of land. I honestly don't know if it could hold 200 million people. Your guess is as good as mine, right? But the Bible says they're coming. And then God says, Jerusalem, not Israel. So, you know. It's a debatable point among some. I never asked God, right? I could have, I guess, but hey, it matters not. The whole point, the message is there. You gotta go or else. First year, no rain. Second year, it's gonna plague, put the plagues on that on you, right? Think about that. 
Now, there are some that say we're going to all be in spiritual bodies, right? And yet there are others that say, you know, that we're all, we're going to be all changed, yes, but you could be an immortal in a physical body while others are in a spiritual body at the same time. See, the water from the rain has to have a purpose, right? And then when it, God says no rain, think of Elijah turning the rain off, right? Think of the two witnesses who are going to turn the rain off. Things are going to get harsh. The Bible tells you a measure of wheat for a penny, uh, three measures of barley for a penny. A penny in the Bible days was a whole day's work. Think about it, brothers and sisters, right? All day. And that's 16 ounces, in case you didn't know. Basically, a loaf of bread. You're going to work all day for a loaf of bread. And tomorrow, you're going to work all day for a little bit of barley. Because they used to make uh, barley beer, okay? You couldn't trust the water. They didn't know about boiling water back in the day, right? But does anything, they didn't learn that to practically modern times, surprisingly. Right? Something so simple as boiling water. Something we take for granted right now. For countless thousands of years, they didn't know about it. People were dying of cholera in the 17 and early, you know, 18 People were dying of it. Simply boiling water could have solved that problem. Nobody knew it. Okay? They, they did this. And you had the calories of the beer. Because they'd eat bread and beer for lunch, right? The calories of the beer. They cleaned the water. And I was wondering, they must have done something with the barley after. Because I wouldn't waste it, right? I know that. But this is the times that are coming, right? Think about it. The two witnesses here is going to be harsh for a lot of people. They'll call down hail. They can do anything they want. At will. Because God trusts them. Right? But the men are going to party when they kill them. Oh yeah, they're going to leave them in the streets. Three and a half days. So that nobody can say, oh, they rose. And you know, but they already can see them right there. That's when God's going to raise them up. Right? God's got a plan. But men like to think they always know better than God. Judas thought he knew better than God. It's going to try to force the situation. There are groups on here. They call them blood groups and all that. And they, they, you know, some varying names, you know, but they're into blood rituals, trying to bring things up on and get these captives free. They don't tell you which people they're trying to set free. Their fellow brothers and sisters in Satan. Because these are Satanists doing blood rituals, trying to bring forth a new age. And, they, and some of them pretend to be talking about God, but they're doing blood rituals to cause events to happen to bring God here. But excuse me. God comes in at his time and his plan. A timeline of God for certain events is shown in the Bible. Yet most don't want to believe that God's got a timeline. Yet he tells you how long certain events are going to be. And he tells you 1,260 days. Duh. Do the math. Right? People don't get it. God, that everything you need to know is right there if you just look. But most don't want to look. Some of you guys say, oh, it's too comfortable for you to say, just listen to what I say. And they do it. They forget that your, your salvation is in your hands because the only name that can save you is Jesus. And you got to take it into your own hands to study to show yourself approved in God and do right by him and learn his living word. But more important, because it's an introduction to Jesus, because he is all about faith and a personal relationship with you. Right? It's your owner's manual to life and how to live. You do what God says and live by God's ways. And he's going to ritually bless you. You go against God, start worshiping idols and everything else, and he's going to curse you with problems. Look what happened to Israel, right? Everybody that went against God lost. Everybody that did what God said got ritually blessed. I mean, a child could explain it to you, right? But most people, you know, they want to make things complicated. That's the devil's game, right? This and that to distract you with smoke and mirrors. Illuminati this, Bilderberg that. Yeah, I know a bunch of stuff. All noise. Right? Of course these things are going to happen. The Bible told me so. I preached about the earthquakes and everything that are coming soon. I told a friend to get out of Hawaii over a year ago. Well, she saw the eruption. She says, well, you know. And she, she was just saying she decided to finally get out of there and listen to me. And go RVing and sell their businesses and everything. A wealthy woman, right? The one I helped with the fennel tea, I might have told some of you about, right? All the problems went away. She got the fennel capsule, but still, she couldn't find any tea. Thing is, spending all countless money on all these tests and all these problems, and suddenly they're all gone. Right? Amazing stuff the Lord makes us, right? Truly amazing. We are made to live in the garden, and all who really need to be well can be found in one. 
Don't think you know better than God. Right? Read his living word. Right? Read it. You know, it's a love letter to you, actually, from God, who loves you very much. He who loves you so much, he sent Jesus down here for you. Look at what you suffered. Did he waste time? I don't think so. I'm here because he gave me another chance. Of more. He's given every one of us a chance. As long as you've got breath in your body, you've got a chance to get right with Jesus. Use this time wisely, right? If you look at it with the eyes of a child, so much jumps out to you and you learn every day. Listen to the audio Bible when you lay down. Learn something new. Open your Bible. Okay? It'll change your world and you'll never want to go back. Once you know the need, need of the living word, that you'll never want to go back to milk. Bye-bye.